Okay, so I have a game that's been compared to Silent Hill that I bet you haven't played. Let's see if it's worth your time. I'm Adam Scott, and this is Welcome to Hanwell. Welcome to Hanwell, a once safe haven from your worst nightmares. Become a cesspool of anomalous scum. Why do we love being scared? I don't like that feeling in real life, but I crave it in movies and games. And while tons of games try, few succeed in creating that true sense of fear. Welcome to Hanwell is a first-person horror game released back in 2017 for Switch, PC, Xbox One, and PS4, and the first game developed by small indie studio Steel Art Software. Even with its small budget, it manages to create a sense of fear and dread that a lot of big-budget games only dream of. Set in an evacuated city, where you need to collect the six MacGuffins while running and hiding from the grotesque creatures stalking you in the darkened corridors and dank hallways. The game opens with you crawling out of a storage fridge in a morgue. It's clear something is very wrong here. The dimly lit room is covered in blood and grime. The seemingly long forgotten rooms and hallways look like the aftermath of something unspeakable. Everything's falling apart at the seams, with nothing left behind except for doctor's notes and recordings strewn about that help you piece together the early story. These don't exactly feel natural, like why are there 10 voice recorders just lying around? No time to think about that, you get the feeling you're not alone. Something's in the shadows. The morgue acts as a tutorial teaching you the basics of movement, using key items in your flashlight, and that you're never safe. Next thing you know, you're running from something. Assuming you make it out alive, now the true game begins. After the introductory guide, don't expect any hand-holding. You can now freely explore the creepy open-world environment of Hanwell. You'll notice the similarities with the old Silent Hill games right away. Sirens blare out, warning you of otherworldly dangers. A pocket radio spurts static whenever a bloodthirsty being is nearby. The streets are deserted, shrouded in a haunting mist. The town has been abandoned, but you're not alone. You start with no information. What's going on? Who are you? Where are you? And why are you here? You'll have to explore to get answers. As you gather more notes and recordings, you'll slowly piece together the mystery. This slow trickle of information drives you to explore the nooks and crannies for every last drop of information. You'll scour the streets, gaining access to various buildings, all while trying to avoid or fight the creatures roaming the streets or lying in wait for you. You're ultimately trying to piece together pieces of an ID card that are spread across the map. Why am I doing this? It's not really important. This is just an excuse to get you to venture out into the dark recesses of Hanwell. The map is handy, labeling the buildings you've already found and keeping track of your progress. Although detailed, it can be difficult to know where you should be heading. The general goal for each area is the same. Explore to find passwords or complete puzzles to progress. Eventually gain access to the room holding the piece of ID before running from the lurking enemies. What keeps things interesting is the unique feel of each area and the stories told through the last known words of the former residents. Each location tells a different yet equally horrifying tale, with some tried and true survival horror staples like a school, prison, church, hospital, and more. They all have a ton of detail, making them feel distinct and compels you to explore. There are a handful of collectible types, like more than 100 DNA samples that you'll want to pick up. The game auto-saves when entering a new building, or you can quick-save at the ATMs around town. This soon becomes a lifesaver, as the town of Hanwell is a vast place to explore, and the dangers are numerous. You'll find all sorts of melee weapons randomly placed around the town, from cricket bats to large wrenches, golf clubs, and metal pipes to name a few. You can defend or strike with the weapons, but the fast movement of the enemies and the lack of meaningful aiming can make this very hit and miss. 
You see what I did there? For each encounter, you'll have to decide if it's better to run, fight, or hide. And sometimes, you won't have a choice. You'll have to fight. Some buildings are secure, requiring you to leave your weapons behind. Most of the time, there's no danger inside, but not always. At points, you'll become tainted, which makes you temporarily blind, which is like the worst thing in the world when everything's out to kill you. I'm blind, I'm blind, I'm blind. You can use special vision to see sounds, which will allow you to navigate the environment. I found this to be incredibly intense at first. After the first few times, it just becomes more frustrating than scary. Okay, so let's talk about the overall presentation and game feel. Without Capcom money, don't expect the same level of polish as Resident Evil, so it's important to keep your expectations in check. There are undoubtedly some rough spots. Movement and animations are often unnatural, overly stiff and clunky, particularly in combat. And there are some muddy textures and sections with less detail than I'd like. However, the presentation as a whole is incredibly strong with everything coming together to create something special. The visual design creates that foreboding, get under your skin feeling that Silent Hill games are known for. In fact, I got serious Shepherd's Glen vibes with the heavy mist filled streets. Smart use of light and shadow masks the lower detail sections and forces you to cautiously look around every corner. Not knowing what awaits you, you'll be very wary of your surroundings, especially when investigating the detailed and gory interiors of the numerous buildings. You'll constantly be questioning if you saw what you think you did. Yes, it's clearly a low budget affair. However, Steel Art Software does a great job of pulling all the elements together to build a thick and ominous feeling. As the sirens blare, the static increases in intensity, and the score all comes together, the anxiety becomes real. It's this thick air of tension that plays on your fears, especially when a few of the well-placed jump scares get you. And I have to admit, I jumped out of my skin quite a few times while playing this game. Even though at times it's a bit of a mixed bag, the overall package comes together to become greater than the sum of its parts. Completing this game and getting the Platinum Trophy is pretty straightforward. Get all the collectibles, finish the story, oh yeah, and get 100 kills in the arena, which is definitely easier said than done. All in, you're looking at about 10 hours to do everything. Welcome to Hanwell is a shockingly good horror game with genuine scares and an atmosphere that builds a real sense of fear and dread. Especially when inside the haunting interiors, the game looks fantastic and the sense of exploration and discovery constantly pushes you forward. For some, the slower paced, large open areas may not click. And yes, some of the mechanics are clunky. However, if you want a game with Silent Hill energy while still doing its own thing, creating a genuine horror experience, Welcome to Hanwell is worth exploring. Okay, you've heard my take on Welcome to Hanwell, and I'd love to hear yours as well. Also, what's your favorite indie horror game? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe. And if you want another game that you haven't played, check out my video right there. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.